It's a okay. Let me finish this real quick. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You're, you're all good. Do what you got to do.
The concept of sportsmanship must be top modeled, expected, and reinforced in all competitive activities. We welcome you to our activity and encourage your enthusiastic support of our program and demonstration of good sportsmanship at all times. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, now at this time, please stand if you are able. Face the flag located on the north end of the end zone for the flag of our Star Spangled Banner, our very own Jack Corral. Under the direction of Jesse Reimer. Oh, and good evening, football fans, and welcome to this week's edition of Friday Night Football, live right here on 810varsity.com. Friends, it doesn't get any bigger than tonight. The top team in Kansas 6A versus the top team in Kansas 5A. Gardner Edgerton makes a 25-mile journey north tonight to enter the swamp here at Mill Valley High with a perfect 3-0 record behind a flex bone double wing offense that some of the top teams in the area run and an electric group of playmakers led by junior quarterback Raven Powell look to extend their perfect record as they march on to a chance to play again for a state championship. Last November, these Blazers fell to Manhattan in a heartbreaker in double overtime and the 6A championship game where Manhattan came up with no bigger stop in school history than a fourth and goal to deny the Blazers the championship hardware. Well, championship hardware is nothing new around Mill Valley. In fact, the last four 5A titles sit in a trophy case about 400 yards from here at Jaguar Stadium. The Jaguars are a perfect 3-0 this year and led by one of the stingiest defenses in the state and an offense that's maturing and is yet to hit its stride. Will tonight be that night? One of the greatest sports entertainers in history once said, in order to be the best, you have to beat the best. For one of these teams tonight, they will do just that. Will it be the Blazers of Gardner Edgerton or the host team, the Jaguars of Mill Valley High? Friends, we are about to find out. We are live from beautiful Western Shawnee with 1v1, and you are watching it live on your home for high school sports, 810varsity.com. We'll be right back with kickoff after this. Some breakfast with the point. You get more with every order. Get a biscuit or a brownie. But no matter what you pick, you get more. more, more. more. Like your favorite water burger or whatever, cause it all gives you more. more.
It's about 76 beautiful, a little bit sticky degrees here in western Shawnee, Kansas, but it's probably going to dip down into the upper 60s by the time this one is through. I am here joined with Austin Eckert. And Austin, as you look at these two teams, a couple of stalwarts in the respective areas, what's kind of something that stands out the most to you? What do you look at on their rosters and say, you know what, there may be a little point of leverage? Well, you and I were talking about this uh, before we went live. We talked about uh, the running game for Mill Valley and how maybe they were going to have to lean on that tonight. They're going up against the best can a team in the state of Kansas uh, in Class 6A. And uh, it's going to be a challenge. It's, it's a great challenge and a great opportunity for Mill Valley tonight. And it's going to be a battle between two of the best teams in the state of Kansas. And it really just doesn't get any better than that, obviously, uh, with um, – with the uh, Gardner Egerton, they they pose a, a big challenge. Obviously, best team in Class Six A. It's it's the biggest um, in um, in all of Kansas high school football, and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. I can't wait for it. Well, when we look at some of the keys to victory for both of these teams, you kind of have to start with the home team, the Jaguars of Mill Valley. And talking with Coach Appleby earlier in the week, he said, "Hey." What we have to do more than anything else is like Olivia Newton-John said back in the day, they just got to get physical. They got to get physical at the point of attack. They got to be physical on defense because let me tell you, the Gardner Edgerton Blazers come in here with a lot of size and a lot of beef. There are players that are six foot nine, six foot five, 325 pounds. So it's going to take quite a bit of physicality to push them around, Austin. Yeah, no doubt about that. It, and uh, for, you know, for Mill Valley to come out here tonight and play against the best team in Class 6A, and if they can come away with a win tonight, it'll be huge for them and their program. Of course, Mill Valley, the four-time reigning state champs in 5A. Last year, they played these Blazers down the road at Gardner-Edgerton. And that game, Gardner-Edgerton got out to a quick 14-0 lead. But then the, the champs, the defending champs, rolled off 35 unanswered points to escape with a 35-14 win. Now, if you look back to the year prior, right here, two years ago, same score, same song, different verse. 35-14 was the final score of that one as well. How much have these two teams changed in the past year through graduation and player development? We are about to find out. Right now the captains are at midfield. And it looks like, well, let's see. Mill Valley is going to defer until the second half. Mill Valley is wearing uh, their all blacks, white helmets, white numbers on black bottoms and black tops. They don't bust those out for, for every game, only on special occasions. And it is homecoming night here at Mill Valley. And, and partners, I look out here. I don't know what the unofficial attendance is going to be, but there are very few open seats, if any, here on the Mill Valley side. And as I look across the way, not too many seats open over there on the Gardner Richardson side as well. No, I totally. I mean, it's a sold out crowd tonight, it appears. And um, I mean, there, I don't I don't really see an empty seat. Maybe there's a couple, but I would assume those guys uh, that are not seated in their seats are out walking around trying to make their way back up to their seats as we get ready for kickoff. Well, and we are about a minute away from kickoff. Glad you're with us here at 810varsity.com. We'll be bringing you the, the latest scores from around the area as well uh, in between quarters and at halftime. Might even have a special guest coming up here. I believe we will as we wait for, to wait for Mill Valley to take the field. Some last-minute instruction from Coach Appleby here on the near sideline. Mill Valley, as I said, are in the All Blacks. They're going to be moving from right to left on your screen. Gardner Richardson in the road whites, if you will. Typically, it's kind of the reverse. Usually when you're at home, you wear the all whites, but this time that's not the case. And we are moments away from kickoff. Number one versus number one. And the fans in the stands are on their feet. Jensen Lofman, one of the best kickers in the state of Kansas to handle the kickoff duties. In fact, coming into this season, he had over 50 touchbacks last year, and he's picked up right where he left off again. He only had a couple that didn't end up as touchbacks. Back deep for Gardner Richardson. 
standing at his own end zone or the one line, one yard line, I beg your pardon. That is number 15. Number 15 was Richard Vault Vandlerberg, the 5'10", 175 pound junior. So partner, we get to take a look at this, this vaunted double wing offense of Gardner Edgerton here to start things off. And I tell you, if, you, if you're a betting man, I'm gonna say, put your money on a run. Yeah, they got two really good running backs in Tristan Baker and Jaden Scobie. They're gonna be bringing As it As does Mill Valley, absolutely. But on the side of Gardner Edgerton and a handoff right up the middle to their big fullback. Sire Padilla, he's all a six foot two, 190. He's gonna be a load to bring down. Folks, he's only a sophomore. Had a chance to see him in pregame. You know, he's listed at six foot two. With his, the way that his shoulders are so wide, I mean, he's just sort of like an upside down triangle. He's built like the proverbial brick house. Second and six, another handoff right up the middle this time. That aforementioned front three and four of Mill Valley pushes back the fullback for no gain, maybe even lost a half yard. It's got to be third and six. Ball spotted just shy of their own 25-yard line for Gardner Edgerton. Yeah, the Mill Valley front line was right there. Let's see if they can do it again. Powell with a handoff. He's going to keep it himself. And Powell's going to have enough for a first down. He gets it out to around the 32-yard line. And Gardner Edgerton couldn't have started out too much better to be able to get that first first down. Has to be huge for this offense. That was the same play they ran uh, the last time. And then it seems like Braven Powell decided to keep it himself, and it worked out in their favor. Braven Powell, he's only a junior, folks. Six foot four, 194 pounds. Not only can he run, but as you see right there, he's got an arm. Give him a little bit of time, and he's going to do some damage. A pass complete out to Colton Hawkinson. Now, Hawkinson, one of the top athletes on this Gardner Edgerton roster, comes in only with a couple of reception this year. But make that three of four. Yeah, quick little out route for him and got a couple of yards. Brings up another first down for them. First and 10 from their own 45. That one, that one and two yard run up the middle on that first couple of plays has turned into about a seven yard gain. Little adjustment there. Great job by Ethan Whitley and Mason Matlock on the right side, clearing the way. Talk about big surge here in a second. Powell out to the left. He's got a receiver and a nice little juke move. That's Randy Singleton, and he's going to take it all the way. Touchdown. Touchdown, Blazers. Randy Singleton. Randy Singleton and the Blazers get the scoring started off. 9.48 left in the first quarter, and they're up 6-0 on the home Jaguars of Mill Valley. Oh, that was a nice play design right there. Quick little five-yard out route for Singleton, and he found the hole, and he was able to break free for a touchdown. Blazers off to a fast start. On for the kick is Ashton Adrian. Able to get that one through, splits the uprights, and we've got a 7-0 score in favor of the Blazers. 9.48 left in the first. And you are watching it live. Friday night football on your number one place for high school sports. That's E10Varsity.com. We'll be right back. Coach here has always been a bacon and cheese Whataburger at Jalapeno's guy. Until now, because he just met Whataburger's Southern Bacon Double. Fresh beef patties, Monterey Jack and American cheese topped with crispy bacon, crunchy slaw, and a tangy Southern style sauce. That's what we call an edible audible. Mm. Good call, Coach. The limited time Southern Bacon Double from Whataburger. Just like you like it. And just like that, Blazers take a 7-0 lead, 948 left in the first quarter. Here is 
Aiden Stara, a bigger bar than Ashton Adrian. There's Aiden Stanley, Ashton Adrian. There's a nice return out to the 25 flags on the field. We got a little, <laughs> little extra cricklers out here around the 45 yard line. No flag there, but the flag was thrown right around the 25 yard line in Mill Valley. We'll see what it comes up to be. Could be a block in the back. We'll see what the official has to say. First flag of the ball game so far. Ding, 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 Austin Eckert. Give him 10 points right there. Call that one right. And we're so far away. We're, we're as far as anybody else here. Good call. The, I'm not sure how many students from Gardner Edgerton are here in attendance. But I think about half the student body over there on the far side, making their voices heard, letting the Mill Valley faithful know that they just can't do that. First and 10 for Mill Valley. Run up the middle, there's Tristan Baker. He had a step and that step got pushed back. He might have came out with about a one yard gain. Going to bring up second and around eight and a half, nine. Yeah, that uh, Gardner Egerton front line really brought it right there. They might be a force to be reckoned with tonight. And you mentioned it, they're bringing the size up against Mill Valley tonight, so it's going to present a challenge for this Mill Valley offense. Isaiah Williams, you see him out there, six foot six, 260 pounds right there in that nose tackle position. More on him in a second. Here's Blaine. Fakes the, well, in fact, he gets it over to Tristan Baker. And he fights hard for about a pickup of five. It's going to bring up third and manageable for Mill Valley. Yeah, a powerful run off to the right-hand side. Didn't really find an opening, but he was able to fight through some tackles. Looks like it's going to be about a third down and four. Third down and three, actually. It's going to be an important one right here. Two wide outs to the near side. Single back is Baker to the right of Blaine. Blaine takes a step back, wants to throw. He's got a receiver over the middle, and he gets away, and he's got extra yardage. Talk about yards after the catch for Mill Valley. That was Preston Fisher, only his third reception on the year, but it couldn't come at a better time for Mill Valley. That gives the Jaguars their first first down in this contest. Well, what do you do? You throw to the big man, Preston Fisher. He's a senior, 6'2", 196 pounds. A little bit of a slant pattern there and was able to get out of bounds and get the first down as well. First and 10 on their own, 43. Two wide outs, single back set. Davian Harris in the slot. Hands it off to Baker. He's going over to the right side, trying to get around the edge. He's got a little bit of room. He runs out of bounds. Short gain of around three and a half or four. Got to bring up second and six from just inside the 50-yard line. So far, Mill Valley has completed that one pass. That was kind of one of those areas that as you look at this on paper, you weren't really sure, you know, how can Mill Valley go up and match up against this gardner Richardson defense? I think as we were talking, partner, before the game, a lot of that is predicated on whether or not Mill Valley can pass. And so far, they've passed the test. I know, that was bad. Another handoff. <laughs> that gets over to, to Tristan Baker. I to call him. Or go ahead there, partner. No, no, I was going to say, it took me a minute to realize what you did there. <laughs> Trust me. No pun hey, intended, right? You know what? You, you get used to that one. We're going to have a lot of those all night. Most people are like, <laughs> what, what did he just say? <laughs> most of the time, I. most of the time it's fairly you gotta have fun when you do games like this though you let's know, be honest it's, hey it's high school football in kansas we are glad that you're with us here on 18 varsity we're gonna have a little bit of fun as well blaine takes a step back he's got a receiver that is harris and he is b l o w n up harris is blown up on the far side i want to say that was number two cam porter one of the top defenders in the state of kansas in fact, I think he's in the top 20 of, of cornerback prospects on this gardner Etcherton team laying the wood to Davian Harris. 649, 648 left in the first. Fourth and six. We'll see if Mill Valley goes for the hard count. In their own territory, too. This is uh, pretty risky. It looks like they're going to just punt it here. And here's Harris. 
Good clean snap. Harris, that one kind of comes off of his foot, a little cattywampus. Not exactly the intended outcome for Mill Valley, and that is going to give the Blazers fantastic field position to start their second drive of the game. They are going to spot that right around their own 30, I want to say 35-yard line. Oh, well, all contraire, mon frere. 43-yard line. I'm sure Coach Appleby would have liked to have that one back. Net gain of yeah, about seven yards. First and ten. Powell under center. Mill Valley showing blitz. Didn't really need to do much there. Busting through the middle. And we're going to say this young man's name quite a bit tonight. And that is Abe Schaefer. He's six foot four, 258 pounds. He's a senior. As well as Hayden Heller, who's getting a start tonight. Again, the six foot sophomore, 241 pounds. Think about this Mill Valley team. They just kind of, I don't know what it is with the water out here, partner, but they just keep growing. And every time you look at their roster, they've got another sophomore that's about 250 pounds. And they're good. Right at the middle, late pitch, faked everybody out. The far side, short pickup of about three. Butosh, Dylan Butosh, the six foot senior. Also a 2022 All Sunflower League honorable mention selection from that, that right side of the double wing. So far, big third down and six coming up. And off up the middle, it's going to be close. I think he's going to get a favorable spot to move the chains. Could be fourth down inches. I think uh, he was just a little bit short. I think they're going to mark it at about the 48 of the Jaguars, and they might go for it here too. Ball's going to be at the 48-yard line. And you're exactly right, partner. I wouldn't expect a punt when they've got a line that they do. Ethan Whitney. Mason Matlock, big old surge. I'm not even going to try his last name. I tried that last year, and I completely butchered it. Got big old surge on the left side. Look for a run over there, and that's exactly what they do. This time it's Braven Powell. Fakes the handoff, and he gets around the corner just enough for a first down. That's going to move the chains for the Blazers. Well, they've been doing this all night, and I think that's what we're going to be expecting out of, out of the Blazers tonight. Triple option. And Powell kept it himself. Faked the entire Jaguar defense. There are three defenders right there to tackle the running back, but they faked him out. Powell has a receiver again over the middle. Guess who? That's number one, Randy Singleton. And he is in for his second touchdown of the night. Randy Singleton makes a 13-0 over the defending 5A champs. How about that? You get the fourth down and one conversion, and right after that, throw it on back to Randy Singleton, and he breaks free up the middle for another touchdown. Gardner Engerton with a dream start to this football game. 4-17 left in the first. So far, it has been all Blazers. Extra point attempt is up, and it is through. We said 13-0, make it 14-0 at 4-17 left in the first, and you are watching it live. Only on the number one place for high school sports, 810varsity.com. We'll be right back. Biscuits and taquitos and breakfast on a bun. Those are just a few of the things you can make a part of your morning routine at Whataburger. Then again, with so many choices, you could make a routine of not having a routine. But would not having a routine still be a routine? Chew on that for a while. Whataburger breakfast, just like you like it. We're back, 14-0, 4-17 left to play in the first, and for the third time this evening, that's Gardner Edgerton kicking off to the Jaguars of Mill Valley. 
And that is dropped in the end zone. He's, he's going to get a favorable call from the official. He was, boy, that was right there. Uh, that was razor thin. I understand that the momentum takes you back into the end zone. I thought now, hate to speculate, but certainly a fortuitous call there for the Jaguars. They're going to have it. They're going to set up shop their own 20-yard line. 4.15 left to go in the first. Austin, as you as you look over there, you got Coach Joe Appleby kind of huddling his guys together. What's the message that he's giving his team right now? I think they just need to play like play like themselves. They, and try not to be like anyone else. Just play football. I mean, like be like be yourself. You know, like you're playing against the best team in the state of Kansas. Just be yourself. I think that's the most important thing. Just go out and do what you normally do and just be yourself. Here's Blaine, and he almost is pulled down to the backfield, and the same result is going to happen. A loss of about five yards, and this Blazer defense is fired up. Yeah, five defenders just smothered up Blaine right there. Loss of a five, like you said. 355, 354. It's going to bring up second and very long for these Jaguars. They are going the wrong way, partner. Loss of four on that play. Going to need a big pickup here. Second, second down and 14. You know, we talk about the passing offense of Mill Valley. Let's be honest, this offense isn't designed to have to come back from behind. They just don't have that firepower through the air. But it's runs like that, gritty, tough runs between the tackles by Tristan Baker. That's going to certainly keep him in this contest. See what they do here on a third and long, third and 11, in fact, for Mill Valley. Yeah, you'd expect them to throw it right here. This is a critical third down. They um, obviously last drive, they almost got the conversion, and then they had to, they punted it. They, I thought they were going to go for it, and then they punted it, and it was a muffed punt. It only went for seven yards. They're going to need a big play right here. Bunch formation on the right side, two tight ends, single set. The back is Baker. He's in to block. Blaine wants to throw. He's got a receiver again right around the 30-yard line. And I think his forward momentum is going to get him a first down, and it will. That was Andy Watts with his second reception of the year. It comes in to this contest with one for 27. Make it two for about, let's see, there was 11. I think they're going to give him about 12 on that one. No bigger reception this year for that young man, or arguably this offense. And just like that, they might have heard us talking about this, this passing offense in Mill Valley that hasn't exactly been prolific as in years past. They and pretty much said, huh, what do you guys know up there? Which is very true. I mean, what do we know? But it's a whole other deal. Blaine's going to keep it himself around the right side. And he is tripped up again for a short gain. But as you see what happened in that, that third and long, I think that just goes to show the great coaching that Coach Appleby and his entire staff have done with this team. Let's face it, we see a lot of teams in that situation, they just kind of fold. And they think, you know what, we're way back in our own territory. We're going to have to punt anyway. Hopefully we just won't fumble. Now Mill Valley, they are ready. We're ready for a second and nine. There's Davian Harris in the slot. Blaine wants to throw again. He's got a receiver. That's going to be a little bit too hard and a little bit too rainbowy. Is that a term, rainbowy? Thank you. Uh, we're just going to go over that. A little bit too rainbowy. <laughs> Put a little too much power on that throw, but I mean, you know, we were talking about the passing game. Seems like they're going to have to rely on that a little bit. I mean, if you're going up against the best team in, in Class no. 6A, you're going to have to play gritty football and you're going to have to get gutsy. You've got Gardner Etchett in here that's saying, hey, we're going to dare you to throw. They're going to stack the box. I mean, it's as we see, they've had a couple of decent runs at Mill Valley, but hats off to this Gardner Richardson defense. Yeah, Three man a lot front. Of Here's Blaine again, looking to his left. Again, he's got wide open, but the wrong color of jersey. That is number two, Cam Porter. There's a flag on the field, but over on the right side. I think. It's going to be P.I. on Gardner Egerton. I think there was a pass interference. I think a wide receiver got tripped up. I'm not exactly sure who that was, but I think it's going to go in Mill Valley's favor, and they're going to get the ball back. They will, and a very fortuitous call for Mill Valley as well, we assume. We'll get the official word. 
That's going to be one that, you know, as we watch on replay, that's just, that's a tough one. Not sure whether their feet kind of got tangled up, but nonetheless, again, at the right time, that P.I. call comes to bail out the Jaguars. They're going to have it now, first and 10 from their own 47, just shy of their 47-yard line, 120 left to play in the first. Yeah, the Jags get a big break with that pass interference call. It might be what they need to get on the board. We'll see what happens. Two receivers set. Man in motion is Watts. Blaine's going to keep it himself. Bigger Barton. Now he's going to hand it off. Those, tell you what, those black uh, jerseys sure are pretty, but they kind of camouflage the ball a little bit. And I've got old eyes. I mean, let's 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 be honest here. That is true. That is true. But I think the black jerseys I think are a little bit distinct for Mill Valley. And for Gardner, for Gardner Egerton's defense, because they because they know who to tackle for sure. So for the first time today, Mill Valley is now in Gardner Egerton territory. The ball spotted at the 49-yard line of the Blazers. Second and six. Single back to the left of Blaine is Baker, and Blaine's going to take it himself. He's zigging and he's zagging and he's got a first down. Down to the 37-yard line. And right now, the Jaguars, we see Blaine kind of favoring, well, he's, he's holding his left hand. Fortunately for him, he's a righty, so it doesn't impact his throwing hand. We'll have to watch that a little bit. Of course, the two-headed monster at the quarterback position for Mill Valley, Connor Bohan, would be next man up. And off again to Baker. Not a lot there. But you know, when you go ahead there, partner. Oh, no, I was just going to say they were ready for that run play there, Garner Edgerton. But that was a big pickup for Blaine as we uh, come to a conclusion here in the first quarter. We'll have to keep an eye on uh, Blaine's hand and see, um, see if that's going to be a factor for this uh, Jaguar offense for the rest of the game. We'll see, but hopefully he's okay. Well, what's old is new again. Just like last year, Gardner Edgerton jumped out to a quick 14-0 lead. And that game, Mill Valley came back with 35 unanswered to win that one. But this one has a little bit different complexion to it. And we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back for the start of the second quarter. And you're watching it live Friday Night Football on your number one place for high school sports. That's 810varsity.com. comes in clutch. And we are back for quarter number two. 12 minutes on the clock before halftime. 14 points on the board for the visitors. The Blazers out of Gardner Edgerton and a big old goose egg for the home Jaguars. Something that has not happened in this stadium in more than four years. Well, I didn't know that, but uh, that's uh, that's pretty incredible for them to, to go four straight years without having this happen. Uh, this is pretty impressive if you're Mill Valley, but Yet again, I mean, you're going up against the best team in all of Kansas high school football in Class 6A in Garner Edgerton. According to that, I'm sure there would be some, there's some folks out west and down in South Central Kansas that may take issue with that, but certainly according to the A10 varsity top 25 in, in, in Class 6A, you're exactly right, partner. Here's second and 10, Blaine. He's under pressure, but he's got some room to run. He's under the 35. He is pushed out of bounds, and there's a hard hit. That's an unnecessary hit, and you just hate to see that. When you got a couple of teams that are playing as hard as they are, I tell you what, that just fires me up. That is undisciplined play right there, 
and you just hope that nobody gets hurt in a situation like that, whether it's the player that gets pushed out or somebody standing on the sideline. You got some trainers over there that were part of that melee. Certainly hope that everybody's okay. Yeah, it seems like he's, uh, he's all right. He's back up on his feet. But uh, it was just unfortunate timing, really. But uh, another big call for this uh, Jaguar offense. You had that pass interference call late in the first quarter. Now you get this late hit call. Now they're in the red zone. They have a chance to put some points here on, on the board. 30, if my math is correct, I'm taking off my shoes, 34 yards of penalties on this drive. And the end result is a first and 10, just outside the 10-yard line of Gardner Etcherton. Top of your screen, wide out is number 18. That is Scott. And there, there is Scoby. And he is, he is brought down hard by Cam Porter. And the entire, I think half the coaching staff from Gardner Richardson's out on the field. They don't like something that they saw. And you're gonna see a pretty animated coach, Jesse Owen over there on the far sideline. That's kind of one of his hallmarks. He loves to work the officials. Let's do a lot of coaches, quite frankly. That's part of it. Like I always tell the kids that I coach after this play here in a second, here's Blaine. He twists around, brought down around the six yard line. I can tell the kids that I coach, have you ever seen an official listen to a coach or a player, somebody in the stands and say, you know what? You're right. I'm going to reverse my call just because you said that. <laughs> now, certainly there's something to be said about leverage for later on. Maybe if there's a kind of a marginal call, absolutely. And here we are, third and three, biggest third down so far for the Jaguars. And no yellow thrown, despite what looked to be an obvious offsides penalty against the Blazers. Trying to draw them offside on third down. I think they will, and Blaine, he's going to... Well, he's under a little bit of pressure. He thought about throwing, but he's going to run it, and he runs it backwards. Again, the Blazers going the wrong way. Or, excuse me, the Jaguars going the wrong way, back to the 10-yard line. And here comes Mr. Thunderfoot, Kenton Lofman, one of the great kickers of Mill Valley fame and one of a long list of great kickers. Of course, we have Chris Tennant. Former Mill Valley Jaguar down there kicking for Coach Kleiman at Kansas State. Harris gets the hold. Lofman splits him. And the Jaguars are on the board with 9.51 left to play before halftime. Blazers still up 14-3. We will be right back live on 18varsity.com right after this. Nine fifty-one before halftime. Your score is fourteen to three. If you're just joining us, you would think, well, hey, we're talking about Mill Valley. They're playing at home. They got to have the fourteen. Not so fast, my YouTube watching friends. Fourteen to three in favor of the Blazers out of Gardner Edgerton, and they have come. They have been loaded for bear all day, loaded for Jaguar, if you will. Despite the the three points, the defense just given up, but. As you pointed out, that drive, there were more penalty yards than there were offensive yards. And that is going to be another touchback for Lofman. As the Blazers send their offense back out of the field, they'll have it first and 10 at their own 20. And boy, they are, they are certainly 
sensing blood in the water. The Land Sharks, as you're affectionately called by the Mill Valley fandom, right now back on their heels after giving up 14 points in the first. Uh, quick out to the right side. Big fella, number four. That was Colton Hawkinson. He's got a couple so far this, this evening, matching his season total. Both of these teams, as we mentioned, come in with a record of 3-0. Get to the first three games for each after this play. And off up the middle. I beg your pardon. That one goes to the right side. I think that was, again, Sire Padilla. That big six-foot-two sophomore. Not only can he, he's kind of got that big bruising body to him, but he also has some get up and goes. Saw him in pregame. I think he was just kind of doing sprints for fun. I don't understand that. <laughs> I mean, that's pure athleticism. And off up the middle again, this time, the front four, that's Abe Schaefer. Abe Schaefer's in there as well as Hayden Heller. The six-foot sophomore, 241-pound sophomore, getting the start tonight again. Name that we haven't mentioned a lot, and that is Jaden Woods, kind of the consensus top recruit of next year's class throughout Kansas. More on him here in a second as we see him kind of lining off way out wide. Little late pitch, little option, and he's got some room and brought down. No horse collar. Kind of look like it from up here. Hard to say. We'll have to look at that on, on replay. But I definitely grabbed the back of the jersey right there, but like you said, hard to tell from all the way up here. Dylan Butash. Been around this program, well, for four years. Said his name for at least three of them including in last year's state championship game in Emporia. What a treat that game was. He almost didn't want that to end, double overtime. Shout out to my good partner and friend, Chance Lebo, who was on that call with me. He's down and you know, a couple of you have asked about old Chance and he's down and he's running things for ESPN Wichita. I think he's, in fact, he's doing a little high school ball tonight. Powell and he gets just swallowed up. Big number 94, that is Hayden Heller. Hayden Heller. He's got a lot of muscle. Having a Heller of a game so far, but he's been in in a lot of those plays to blow up that double wing offense from kind of catching hold. Well, he's only a sophomore and he's 241 pounds. He was all over that one right there. They're gonna need another big play here on this third down and nine. Huge play for both the offense of the Blazers. I know that's kind of a Kind of a corny thing to say, 655, 654, left before halftime, but a huge play for both sides of the ball. And Powell looked like he wanted to put that one in the air. But a timeout call by Coach Owen on the far side of the field, reaches into his pocket, charges a timeout, 650 before halftime. Right, we're gonna keep it right here, partner. Have a little quick game recap. The first quarter. Blazers coming out strong defensively and offensively too. But really it was all about Randy Singleton. It is the Powell to Singleton show. Two strikes to Singleton and two touchdowns by the senior wide receiver coming into this game with only six receptions on the year but for 165 yards. Also has a rush for 25. This young man is legit with a capital L. Where's the number one on his jersey for a reason? Mill Valley, however, battled back after being down 14-0 at the end of one. They're able to put up their first three points of this contest on a Kitten Lofman field goal about four minutes ago. And right now, with a third and nine, the Blazers, they are gonna start this one at the 47-yard line of Mill Valley. Four-man front, 
for the Jaguars. Double wing set, bunch formation on the right side, plenty of blockers trying to get around the edge. He's got plenty of room, and there is a big flag, and that's going to be called back, friends. That is going to be called back, and you hate it for that young, that young athlete because somehow, and we're going to have to check his shoes because he's got some of those George Jetson things going on because he just <laughs> – he took off like a rocket. And not only that, he was very patient. I mean, he, he waited for right. the opening to open up, and, and he broke through. But, you know, and that's one of those runs that I'm afraid, you know, the, the, the penalty, boy, that's, that's a tough call because I'm not sure that that penalty or the infraction impacted the play. But nonetheless, lock in the back is what it is, and that's going to thwart the touchdown, going to bring him back. We'll see where they see, mark them. That's that's kind of the the big question right now. Here's so the call. Oh wow! And no they, flag on the play. It's a touchdown for Sire Padilla. Wow. So let's just back up 30 seconds. Touchdown Blazers. 20 to three. 6:41 left before halftime. And this is the Trailblazers show here at Mill Valley High. But that was an absolute fantastic run. And just as I said, maybe what, about 10 minutes ago, sometimes the, the lobbying, well, and that was a, a botched snap and a good alert play by the defense of Mill Valley, number 32, getting in there to blow that one up. That was Garrett Clark. The six foot 189 pound junior heads up play. But let's go back to that flag, no flag. Oftentimes you'll have, I mean, you can probably break down any football play and you're going to have a hold somewhere. Right. Uh, you know, whether it's offensive or defensive, but they're not going to call it if it didn't impact the play. You know, if it's you're on the far sideline, you got a hole here on the near, yeah, you're probably not going to get that. And I think that might have been what happened, but. Make no mistake, the lobbying effort by Coach Jesse Owen on the far side had an absolute lot to do with that flag being picked up. Yeah, we, we've, we've seen him on the sideline all game long so far, just uh, letting, the, letting the referees know what, what he's feeling. And that was a big, uh, you know, flag on the play. Oh, no, nope, never mind. Touchdown. And what a – that's, a, that's a, uh, a gut punch, if you will to this Mill Valley defense just when they thought they had a little bit of momentum. They had them in a third and nine situation. And just like that, from about 50 yards out, Mr. Padilla gets six of his own. He says, you know what, Mr. Singleton, I see what you did right there. I don't need to catch it. I'm just going to run it. And run he did. Boy, he just turned on the Jets. He really did. And I, I brought it up earlier. He was patient. He he waited for maybe about two or three seconds, and then he saw an opening. He said, all right, see you later. Phew, touchdown. How was that again? What's that sound effect? Phew. There it is. <laughs> kind of like the Roadrunner, right? There you go. Beep, beep. <laughs> and this crowd on the near sideline sitting in somewhat stunned silence. A lot of arms crossed. This is not a position that the Mill Valley faithful have been in too many times over the past five, six, seven years. And that is going to be a touchback by Mr. Ashton Adrian. Ashton Adrian was an honorable mention all Sunflower selection last year, and we can certainly see why. 6.41 until halftime. Jaguars in a 17-point deficit after that, that botched extra point attempt. I ask you somewhat rhetorically in the first quarter, partner, if you were Coach Joe Lappaby, what are you telling your team? And right now, that 17 points certainly seemed like a giant elephant. But as they say, how do you defer? How do you how do you eat a giant elephant? One bite at a time. That's what they're going to have to do. Two receivers to the near side. Single back is Baker. He's trying to get around the corner, cuts it back, and he's oh. blown up. And that – look at that on the, the replay. That uh, – might have been helmet to helmet there, but. That was a hard hit there by, I think that was uh, Mark Dibiak right there. Laid a big time hit. Dibiak is a big man. 6'4", 245 yards. He's going to play on both sides. 
the left and the right side. He's kind of one of those floaters. Wherever he thinks he can kind of do damage, that's where you're going to see him line up. Five-man front, and again, they're saying, hey, we're going to stop. We're going to load up the box, and just like that. And now it's number 14 into the game. That was Connor Bohan. Connor Bohan, a little bit more prolific with his legs coming into this contest. 31 of 100, or excuse me, 31 carries for 140 yards and three touchdowns. But I'm sure that the Gardner Edgerton coaching staff can see the same stats that we have. Connor Bohan only three of 11 for 20 yards and an interception with a 107 quarterback rating this season. Looking to change that here. Here's Bohan. He's going to roll out to his left. Sets up. Squares his shoulders. Fires one to the far side. He had Davian, Davian Harris. But he is. That, that was. Uh, he slung it out there. Yeah, he ripped it right there. It was just a little bit off target, but he uh, showed his arm power. Almost in the reach of Davion Harris. But it looked like it was going to be a first down, but they're going for it on fourth down and eight in their own territory at their at own least, 22. At least that's what it looks like. We expect Bohan to kind of take a couple of steps back. His coaching staff's going to say, hey, go ahead, take three or four back, do a little pooch punt. Not plenty of time. That one kind of comes off again. I think the technical term on that is cattywampus for the second time today. Those punts from Mill Valley it aren't what you would consider textbook. And that one I think is gonna be a net gain, if you will, of let's see, maybe 20. I think they're gonna mark it wow. at about the 46, 46 of Gardner Egerton, 47 yard line, I think 46, 47, whatever it is, but. Look, hey, not a horrible punt. I thought it bounced out really on the left side of the 50, but nonetheless, what a big stop by Gardner Edgerton again, holding the, the vaunted Mill Valley Jaguar offense. Now we're going to see the Blazer offense with 5.02, 5.01 left before halftime, and they would love to add to that 17-point lead going to the locker room. Absolutely. As a reminder, at halftime, we'll bring you up to speed on a number of scores from the Kansas City metro area and points beyond... A lot of hot matchups taking place tonight. There's a hot run by the quarterback, and no one is going to stop him. Dime nickel, money in the bank, touchdown! Touchdown, Blazers! Braven Powell from midfield. All this Blazer team does is score big plays. Well, another patient run. This time it's Brave and Powell. He uh, he waited a little bit for a couple of seconds, kind of like his running back in Sire Padilla earlier, about two or three minutes ago. Broke free, found an opening on the near sideline, and did it right in front of the Mill Valley bench. Broke three, broke free for a touchdown. Twenty-six to three. Now it looks like they're going to go for two because if you remember, they muffed the punt with the extra point in their last touchdown. So we'll see what they, they do will. here. Powell under center. Fullback, Padilla. Powell's going to keep it himself, and he's going to walk right in there. And that looked a little bit too easy, quite frankly. And he kind of got to wonder, you know, where's the psyche of this Mill Valley defense being down? I mean, of course you talk about being punched in the mouth. Right. I mean, they've been punched in the mouth and then in the gut and back to the mouth. Maybe the kidneys, because it's 28-3, friends, and it's 431 until halftime. Well, two things. I mean, it's a credit to the Blazer offensive line. They've uh, had a pretty good performance so far, and big reason why we've seen Raven Powell and Sayer Padilla break free for those big touchdowns. 28-3 is the score right now, partner, and all I can think about right now is that Super Bowl between the Patriots and the Falcons. Could this be another scenario? I don't know, but 28-3. You gotta wonder, but we'll see what happens uh, throughout the rest of this game. But as far as the well, Jags are concerned, I'm, they, I'm, I'm sticking my head out the window, partner, and I, I don't see Tom Brady suiting up for the Jaguars, <laughs> but hey, 
Yeah, we yeah. understand he's unemployed, but I think he might be out of eligibility. Well, maybe uh, one of the two quarterbacks, whoever they decide to roll out with, uh, will maybe enter their – or maybe bring in their inner Tom Brady out. We'll Amen. see what happens. But hats off to this Blazer team. They came in. Uh, that's taken by the up back. That could have been trouble. And how disastrous could that have been for the Jaguars if he didn't come up with that? But now the Jaguars have a fighting chance, if you want to call it that, down by 25 points. Well, this is the best field position that Mill Valley has started off in the, in the first half. I mean, they've worked from their own 20 and their own, I think, 12-yard line to start the game once they got on offense. And now they're working from their own 31-yard line. Connor Bohan back into the game. Twin receivers to the near side. Single back is Baker to the right of Bohan. Bohan's going to hand it off to Baker. And once again, he's just stuffed right up the middle. You know, sometimes the offensive play calling is designed to kind of loosen things up as the game progresses. But I'm here to tell you that front four, three or four, depending on the formation at the time, for the Blazers is legit. We haven't seen much of Chris Marcos yet, but he's all a six foot nine, 350 pounds. Got Isaiah Williams, 6'6", 260, and Spencer Easley over there, 6'2", 220. He's a big boy. Kind of looks small compared to the other two. Bohan's going to roll out to the right. Nice block by Baker. Frees Bohan just a little bit. He's able to turn the corner. Go feel it for a gain of about five. Makes it third and manageable for the Jaguars. Well, we've seen Connor Bohan uh, run a little bit with his feet. I like Daniel Blaine. And uh, I think Bohan also, he's got a pretty strong arm. We saw that in the, in the last drive when he tried to get one out to Davion Harris on the far sideline. See if they use his arm here on third down and two. Bohan waits for the snap, looks to the sideline. Play adjustment, seven, six, five on the play clock. Third and two for the Jaguars. Two seconds, one second. They get it off in time. Bohan runs to his right, and he is stopped short of the first down. And again, that was, you know, I can't see exactly where he stepped out of bounds, unlike the first where he was already out of bounds, giving himself up, and he was just slobber knocked by a Blazer defender that uh, they kind of pulled back, and rightfully so on that play. Slobber knocked. That's another very technical term. I haven't heard that word in a long time. Slobber knock, that's good. Well, when you get to be as old as I am, you can pull a lot of those words out. <laughs> Youngin. Sean Brewer, Austin Ecker, glad you're with us here at 810 Varsity. We got the Jaguars and the Blazers. I think Coach Appleby says, you know what? Something there I don't quite like. And with 2.57 left before halftime, he kind of gives the Blazers a little bit of a gift. Blazers have two timeouts left. Jaguars now have two. But presumably, Blazers, not that time is a huge issue, but and a run-heavy offense certainly could be. Well, we've seen two punts from the Jaguars. Obviously, not the best ones. I mean, the last punt went for a good amount of yards, and they put them uh, over there in Blazer territory just a little bit. But it'll be interesting to see what uh, Coach Appleby has in mind. Maybe they'll maybe they'll go for it here. I mean, it's fourth down and three. You only need three yards, and they're going to need a score to, to end the first half uh, to maybe kind of build up some momentum as they get into the second half. Considering, you know, the net punt yardage, it might be the wise call to go for it, as you pointed out. Certainly looks like they are. Baker to the right of Bohan. Bohan looks to the sideline. And now they're going to send him back. He's going to be parted around his own 27. Another hard count, 11, 10, 9 on the play clock. Still plenty of time. Soft snap. That one again. And that's just not working, folks. If you are a Jaguar fan, that's about what is that, the third, if not the fourth punt that's kind of come off the side of the foot. They might as well have gone for it. 
But, you know, in that timeout, you, you know that that had to be a conversation. Right. But Coach Appleby, and I, rightfully so, he's thinking, hey, if we don't get it, we're really putting the Blazers in great field position. So at least try to turn the kind of field over a little bit. Right. Now they have it first and 10 from their own 42-yard line. Do the Blazers with a 25-point lead. Run it right up the gut. Little to no gain, maybe about a half a yard. Going to bring up second and nine. Another run by Padilla. How impressive has he been? This entire offense, but certainly calling out Mr. Padilla. Pretty, pretty impressive for a sophomore. Big old surge, number 72, six foot one, 325. Clearing the way, and another big play. This one he connects again with Colton Hawkinson. Colton Hawkinson, that is his third reception. If I'm not mistaken, all three of his receptions have gone for first downs. What we've seen from the passing game from the Blazers, they uh, they, they get the ball out quick. Mm-hmm. They they don't uh, take a lot of time in the in the pocket if you're brave and Powell. But in terms of the passing game, I mean, this is a run-heavy offense for the Blazers, but when it comes to the passing game, they get it out quick, just like right here. And Powell, and guess who got that one? Puts on a little nifty move, and he is going to go again. Mr. Singleton, the trifecta of touchdowns. Touchdown, Blazers. Randy, three touchdowns so far. Singleton puts the Blazers up 31-3. to Let me repeat that. 31-3 against the four-time defending 5A state champion Mill Valley Jaguars. And if you look at that, there's no trickery. There's no razzle-dazzle. It's just good football. Get it out there. Let it make a play. Get the ball in your playmaker's hands and let it make a play. Looks like like we got a flag for a false start, but you saw the Blazers. They muffed the the snap again. So they, uh, I I think that was a blessing in disguise. But let's go back to that last play. I mean, this is absolutely incredible. Uh, Three touchdowns on the night. Three in the first half. And 35 points for this Blazer offense. They're having a and all three dream first half. Well, and all three Singleton touchdowns were from around 50 out. Kick is up, and it is good. Make it 35-3. to three. Friends, if you're just joining us, you're looking at the screen. You're looking at the score on the screen. You think, wait a second. What's Brewer doing with the score? That can't be right. Focus the camera. Friends, it's right. 35 points to the number one team in Kansas 6A. Gardner Edgerton up by 32 points over the Jaguars in Mill Valley. You got a front row seat to the action right here on 810varsity.com. 153 before halftime as a reminder. We'll bring you up to speed on scores throughout the entire region at halftime. There will be some homecoming festivities as well. I think we'll have, uh, I think the dance team will be out there. Quick little side note. Occasionally we hear from moms and dads and family members of the the dancers. They wonder, hey, why don't you play the audio or the video? Well, there's some copyright issues. When they play maybe like a Taylor Swift song or, you know, whoever it is, Easy E. I don't know. I guess they probably wouldn't be playing Easy E, but if they did, that'd be cool. Or Johnny Cash. Maybe they're going to dance to Johnny Cash. (laughs) We have to turn it down or basically YouTube says, "Eh, no moss. I can't lie. Everyone loves Taylor Swift, but obviously we can't do We can't play that for copyright reasons, but. 35 to three. Kicking off again. It's a bigger part than Ashton Adrian. We're going to have to. Get him an extra bucket of ice at halftime for all the kicking that he has done. Kicking off after touchdowns, extra points. I don't think, uh, is it Tommy Trumpet or Timmy Trumpet? I'm not sure. I don't know either. Timmy, Tr- Tom- Timmy. Yeah, it's Timmy Trumpet. Speaking of Timmy, Eric Pinner. And a great young lineman for Mill Valley. Been impressive out there alongside Gus Hawkins. Gus Hawkins, one of the top five recruits in Kansas this year, going to be taking his talents down I-70 and play for Coach Kleiman. Yet another Mill Valley Jaguar that will be continuing on playing a little D1 ball. And there is Tristan Baker, his biggest run of the night. That goes from 15 all the way out to the 35-yard line. Well, you can see... Uh, 
Daniel Blaine is back in the game for the Jaguars. I'm not sure why he was out for the past couple of drives. I don't know if it was the left hand that we saw earlier. He kind of landed on an awkward uh, on a desired right. keeper, but he's back in the game. Daniel Blaine stands all of five foot nine. He certainly plays like he's about six foot five, 220. Art of the Lion. He's got Baker out here on the flat, wide open. Baker gets out of bounds around the 41 yard line of Mill Valley, about halfway to a first down. 124 left before halftime. We talk about that elephant partner. And how do you eat that elephant? In this case, 32 point elephants. One bite at a time, and that's what Mill Valley's doing right now. Obviously, the focus needs to be on this drive if you're the Jaguar offense. Don't worry about the score. Just try to get some points on the board as you go into, into the half. Second and three. Blaine wants to throw, brings it back down. He's got a first down a little bit more. Just shy of midfield. This fast tempo is serving Mill Valley well. See the Blazers, a lot of hands on hips. Well, discombobulate us. I think there's a little confusion on, or maybe on assignments there, but you know, if you're the Blazers, how concerned are you by 32 points in the first half? Pulls it back, Blaine rolls out to his left. He wants to go deep to Baker. Baker. As speedy as he is, one of the fastest Jaguars out here. Not quite that fast. But again, Blaine says, hey, did you guys say something about my, my passing skills earlier? And he just let that, I mean, that was 30 yards in the air, no sweat. I mean, both Daniel Blaine and Connor Bohan have really displayed their uh, arm capabilities. They've had some big time throws here in the first half. But uh, I want to mention this real quick. They get the... Um, Mill Valley gets the ball to start the second well, half. If they can come away with the score, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown, I think it's going to benefit them, really, as they open up the second half because they get the ball back. There's Blaine under pressure. Rolls out. He is scrambling. Is that Russell Wilson? No. That is Mr. Blaine out there, and he gets rid of it. And again, rainbows it out a little bit too much and can't get it to awaiting Andy Watts. About five yards too strong. Bring up third and 10, 44 seconds left before halftime. I gotta wonder, is Coach Owen gonna pull out his charge card and maybe charge the timeout here if they run it, don't get the first down? Why wouldn't you? I mean, the rich get richer, it's the law of the land. 35 3, 44 seconds left before half. Yeah, and there's Coach Owen taking a timeout. But not when we thought that he would. Friends, whether it's balls and strikes, fouls or flags, your referees and game officials are a vital part of high school athletics. If you've ever tried your hand at officiating, you know how hard these men and women work. You certainly know they would never miss a call intentionally. We're all human. Keep these things in mind as you attend sporting events, regardless of the competition level or age group. After all, respecting others, including officials and authority figures, is one of the most valuable and important lessons we can teach and emulate for our kids. This message has been brought to you by your friends here at A10 Varsity, as well as the Kansas State High School Athletics Association. 44 seconds till halftime. 35-3. Just like we thought it would be, right? Not at all. I don't think so. I thought it was going to be maybe a little bit closer, but I mean, you know, the Blazers have had a dream first half. As far as the Jaguars go, it's going to be important for them to go into halftime and really kind of figure out, you know, what they really need to do. And I think they just need to work on the small things before they really worry about the big things in the second half. I have to go back to the record book. A little razzle-dazzle reverse. Here is Watts. He's in a little bit of trouble trying to find the edge. He can't get around it. He's pushed out of bounds around the 46-yard line. That's going to be well short of a first down. And the Blazers presumably are going to get this ball back with plenty of time left on the clock to put together another drive. Trivia question, how many times have the Blazers not scored when they've had the ball? On offense, that would be zero. 
And here's Blaine taking about two or three steps back. Blaine, that is his best punt of the evening by far. And that is going to take a very, oh. Oh, almost. And he knew it. Mr. Scobie knew it. Or I beg your pardon. That was Clayton Sondergroff. The 5'9 junior. I think he wanted it to get right there on the edge. Like right, right there at there. the one yard line. Right there. Waited just a little bit too long. Hey, give credit to Daniel Blaine after um, after he had that little bit of a muffed punt earlier, and I can't remember if he he's done it twice because we've seen Connor Bohan in the game too, and he had another punt as well. It seems like the Blazers are just going to kneel the half out and go into halftime with this 32-point lead. But that was a really good punt by Daniel Blaine. As we see the final 18, 17 seconds tick off of the second quarter. We look at the score beneath the time, and it says the visitors with 35 points and the Jaguars with three. If my math is correct, and I'm looking at the stats and the history here in front of me, this is the largest halftime deficit of any Joel Appleby coach team here in Mill Valley. And that is saying something. At the hands of the Blazers of Gardner Etcherton. We got about a 20 minute halftime show. We've got homecoming, coronations, and we have some other awards. I'm not exactly sure. As a reminder, we're gonna keep the video live, but we will not be playing any of the audio, of course, for copyright reasons. But we will, however, play the audio during the coronation celebration, coronation pageantry. Is that what it's called? I guess. Whatever they do for homecoming. But right now, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be back right here live on A10Varsity.com. Coach here has always been a bacon and cheese Whataburger at Jalapeno's guy. Until now, because he just met Whataburger's Southern Bacon Double. Fresh beef patties, Monterey Jack and American cheese topped with crispy bacon, crunchy slaw, and a tangy southern style sauce. That's what we call an edible audible. Mm. Good call, Coach. The limited time southern bacon double from Whataburger. Just like you like it. comes in clutch. JLC and is a member of National Honor Society. Tristan is undecided on his major, but plans to attend Kansas State University. Congratulations, Tristan, on your homecoming team nomination.
Congratulations, Jacob, on your homecoming team nomination. 
situation. King is Blake Powers. Time for some halftime scores from across the area. Scores can be found 24-7, seven days a week at A10Varsity.com. Yesterday, Olathe East had their way with the Lions out of Lawrence, 24-6. Blue Valley North and Ray Peck. Not a lot of scoring in that one. A couple of potential high-powered offenses. Ray Peck up 7-0. Blue Valley Northwest and Lee Summit North tied up at 7. That's a halftime score. Rockhurst over Bishop Miege, 14-0 halftime score. Blue Valley, 14. Blue Springs, 6. Spring Hill, 13. Blue Valley West. Southwest, beg your pardon, 49. 49-13. That is early in the third quarter. 
Blue Valley West and fellow Jaguars, 14, Staley, 7. St. Thomas Aquinas, 14, St. James, 0. Obviously right here, Gardner, Edgerton, 35, Mill Valley, 3. Free State, 27, Shawnee Mission Northwest, 6. The Raiders out of Shawnee Mission South, 7. Olathe North, 33. Halftime score. Olathe West, 14. Olathe Northwest, 0. Olathe South, big over Shawnee Mission West, 50-0, third quarter score. Shawnee Mission East over the Bison of Shawnee Mission North, 21-0. Baser Linwood, 28. Shawnee Heights, 0. DeSoto, 30. Pioneers, 11 or 7. DeSoto, a fellow USD 232 school to Mill Valley. Piper, 7. Topeka West, 0. Bishop Ward and Turner, no score. The Bulldogs had a ball that went high in Santa Fe Trail. Right now, the Bulldogs are besting the Chargers, 19-7, third quarter score. Tongi and Paola had a tight one. Tongi just took a lead, 21-14, third quarter. Eudora and Ottawa, right now, the Cyclones up by three over the Cardinals. And down in Derby. Derby up over the Salt Hawks of Hutchison High, 20-2. Score you don't often see in football, 20-2. Alley Center 21, Hayesville Campus 7, Salina South and Mays doing battle. Right now it's Mays 21, Salina South 6. Mays South 35, Newton 6, Goddard 29. Arkansas City Bulldogs 6. And Goddard Eisenhower 27-10 over Andover Central. And Andale. A big over pretty much everyone. Right now, they're up 58-0. And finally, Wichita Collegiate 35, Clearwater 0. That is a third quarter score. Going across the state line. Lee Summit West, 19. Lee Summit, 14. Third quarter score. Blue Springs South and Green Valley in a tight one. Right now, the Eagles out of Green Valley up over. Jaguars out of Blue Springs South, 10-7. Liberty North, 31. Park Hill, 0. So we mentioned earlier, Ray Peck over... Blue Valley North halftime, 7-0. Blue Valley Northwest tied up with Lee Summit North, 7s at halftime. Park Hill South, 16, Liberty 7. Wow, Park Hill South, 16, Liberty Blue Jays, 7. Raytown and Fort Osage. Right now, the Indians out of Fort Osage up big, 42-6. Well, we've got about six minutes before we get things started here in the third quarter. A couple of more scores over on the Missouri side. I can tell you that the Bulldogs out of Grandview. Besting the Truman Patriots, 32-7. to seven. That is a third quarter score. Oak, Oak Park, the Northmen, 28. Pirates of Platte County, 0. Oak Grove, 14. Clinton, 6. Warrensburg, 28. Center, 0. I mentioned earlier, Rockers, 14. Bishop Meage, 0. And Maryville. I think they are the Spoonhounds, if I'm not mistaken. The Maryville Spoonhounds over the Dragons of Cameron. Now, how many times, high school, professional, have you ever had a game between the Spoofhounds and the Dragons? Well, we got one between Maryville and Cameron right now. The Spoofhounds up by 7, 7 0 at halftime. Last score from the Missouri side Pius, 31, Chillicothe, 13. Reversing that score. Take a real quick break. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Recap the first half and look forward to quarter number three here at Jaguar Stadium where your score, the visiting Blazers out of Carter Edgerton up big. When I say big, I mean 32 points big. 35 to three over the four-time 5A defending state champ Jaguars. And we'll be right back.
And welcome back here to Jaguar Stadium. Your score, 35-3. to Blazers of Gardner Edgerton up big over the home Jaguars. Mentioned toward the end of the, the first half, according to my quick research, that was the, the largest margin that any Joel Appleby coach team had been down at halftime. Well, my good friend Eric Kramer, father of a couple of Mill Valley Jaguar greats, reminded me that back in 2016, these Jaguars were down to Bishop Miege by a few more points than this 32-point spread. So, well done, Eric Kramer. Hope all is well in your world and your youngsters as well. You know Ethan's out there, Colorado School of Mines, doing great things. One of the best ever. Lace them up. Of course, on the Blazer sideline, we can go through a whole list. You know, I was talking with someone from Gardner this morning about Austin Bowie, the great tight end last year and the years prior. Just like that, we are underway. Wasting no time. So the Jaguars are going to have it first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. They're down by 32 points following three touchdowns in the first half alone by Mr. Randy Singleton. You've got a 50-yard run by Braven Powell. You've got Padilla with another 50-yard or so run. It's just been big play after big play. But as we were talking at halftime, partner, it's not like the offense of the Blazers is really doing anything spectacular. They're just very assignment sound. First and 10, handoff to Baker, tries to get around the edge. He's brought down after a short game. Oh, well, yeah, you said it best. I mean, they're uh, they're just doing what they're supposed to do out there. And as far as the Jaguars go, we talked about it a little bit. You know, I I really think uh, Mill Valley, they, they're maybe trying to play big ball all the time, and maybe they're not feeling like themselves right now. And I think the message at halftime, you know, if you're Coach Appleby is just – just play, just be yourself out there. And if you're not yourself, then everyone's going to see it. And, you know, we saw that a little bit in the first half, or really all throughout the first half, if you will. But I think the message is just be yourself and, and play like, and, and, you know, just hmm. play like you have been playing. And it seems we're going to get a timeout really so, early. Uh, five seconds into the third quarter, and Mill Valley is going to have to burn one of their three second-half timeouts. Again, very uncharacteristic of the Coach Appleby led team and that just kind of goes to show just some nights you put on the jersey you put on the pads and you go out there with the best intentions and somebody smacks you in the mouth and that changes your whole mentality and i think that's really what we're looking at with right. this mill valley team yeah they just got to play like themselves they can't you know try to you know can't play out you can't go out there and play like you're a different team you got to play like mill valley jaguar football and so we'll see if that's the case here in the second half. Second and seven, a handoff again to Baker. Baker gets a little bit more, more than the average that he had in the first half. Able to exploit the edges just a little bit. Great job by Eric Penner coming around. He pulls and part of that big blocking package. Of course, you see out there at big number 78, such an imposing figure out there for Mill Valley. That is Gus Hawkins. Two on this side of the center. Here's Blaine. Single back is Baker. Going to hand it off to Baker again, and he's going nowhere. Baker, he is met by a brick wall. And I think that was big number 96, if I'm not mistaken. That was Isaiah Williams. Seems like the outside runs for this Jaguar offense are working so far. Maybe they need to continue doing that because every time they've kind of run it up the gut, I mean, it's been successful a little bit in, in terms of short yardage, but if you're wanting to get long plays, you know, out there on the field, you're probably going to have to run it on the outside. But Second and 10, Mill Valley from their own 34-yard line. Blaine wants to throw. He's got plenty of time, runs out, kind of runs into a little bit of trouble, and he throws that one into the turf. That was intended for Preston Fisher, who had a couple of really nice grabs in the first half that went for first downs. That one was for not. It's going to bring up third and long for the Jaguars. 11-08 left to play here in the third. Just really good coverage by the Blazers secondary. They were all over all the all the receivers on the field, and 
Nothing going for for Daniel Blaine. This is a third down and 10 here. They might uh, try to air it out once again. Not really a team that is built to air it out, but Daniel Blaine has put together a couple of really nice throws, and right there, that was a great throw. Hit him right in the hands. Unfortunately, Eddie Watts couldn't quite come up with it, and just like that, the Blazers do what they got to do. Defense off the field, forcing Mill Valley, presumably, into a punt situation. Down by 32 points. I just don't see the Jaguars going for this one. Might try a hard count to get half of that 10, but we will see. And there, flags are flying. I think that had the unintended consequence. That's kind a false start. Jolting the wrong side of the ball if <laughs> you're Mill Valley. Well, in that last play, we saw Eli Porter on the coverage, and uh, he was lucky right there. It, you know, it was a really good, really good ball thrown by Blaine, and Porter was right there on it. So he might have gotten a piece of it. You know, they say that some of the best defensives just kind of run with a fluidity, and they all kind of move as one unit, and that's what we're seeing out of this Blazer defense. They are just all in lockstep, and they know where each other is, and a nice Mill Valley roll on that punt. Another nice punt by Daniel Blaine. Two really good punts for him. Uh, he ended the first half with a really good punt. It almost, it, it almost was uh, was placed at the one yard line, but they failed to keep it in bounds, and it went in the end zone for a touchback, I guess. But um, another really good punt by Daniel Blaine. I mean, they started off it, not not the greatest punts, but then the, but then Blaine bounced back, and he's had two really good ones so far. He just needs to keep it up as far as the punting goes. But for the Jaguar offense, they're going to have to find a way to get their mojo going. Every but the defense right here, they're going to have to get a big stop. Blazer the, offense has been all over the field today. The first half, every time the Blazer offense touched the ball, they came up with points. This drive, the first drive of the second half, starts with a short run up the middle for two for Mr. Padilla, who had a just a beautiful run down the right, the far side, toward the end of the first half. Leave at that point, made it around 28 to three. Second and eight for the Blazers. Same double wing set, two tight ends. A little late pitch to the aforementioned. Is that Butosh? Can't really see sometimes the numbers. Numbers are hard, math is hard. If there's numbers involved, probably gonna struggle. That was Dylan Butosh. You know, I was looking at the roster partner coming into this game. And I think, boy, why would they take someone like Dawson Kindler and put him on defense? I mean, he was an all-state running back last year, part of the that offense that led him to a runner-up in state uh, or in 6A, made it to the state championship game. Now we can see when the stable is full of runners, you can afford to send one to the other side of the ball. Bring up fourth and one, 9:38, 9:37 left in the third. Wonder if they'll go for it or maybe fake it out and just punt it away. We'll see. 32-point lead. Maybe try to draw them off sides. They almost did it here on the near side. Let's see what Powell and company decide to do. Man in motion. He gets the pitch. Turns the corner. He's got a first down and so much more to midfield. Finally brought down around the 40-yard line in Mill Valley. Fantastic run, this one by Grant Ellis. The 5'7", 145-pound senior. Coming into this game, only had nine carries for 81 yards, one reception for 18. Got about a third of his season total on that run right there. Gutsy call by head coach Jesse Owen to go for it in four, fourth down and one in their own territory. What? And they're up by 32. Well, a play like that, a lot can go wrong as well. A bad pitch. Obviously a bad snap, but that's one. And we've seen the defensive front for the Jaguars have some penetration at times, but certainly it hasn't been sustained enough to keep the Blazers. Now well, this time we're going to have a timeout on the field. Coach Jesse Owen on the far side. See something he doesn't like. Going to reset his group. 8.35 left in the third. 35-3 is your score. Blazers over the Jaguars. And you were watching it. Only on 810varsity.com. Be right back.
Jack Stack carryout comes in clutch. Back with you here from beautiful West Shawnee, Kansas, here at Jaguar Stadium. First and 10, Blazers. Powell under pressure by Woods. He's got a man wide open. Touchdown, Blazers. Colton Hawkinson gets in the scoring party as well. His first touchdown of the year. Makes it 30, let's see, what would that be? 41, 41 to three. That was a beautiful pitch and catch right there by Braven Powell to one of his most, I guess, one of the favorite receivers, Colton Hawkinson. Caught that at the 10, turned around, waltzed right in. He was wide open, as wide open can be. Point after attempt is good. 42 to 3. 39 point lead. Blazers up over the Jaguars. You are watching it live on A10varsity.com. Be right back. Biscuits and taquitos and breakfast on a bun. Those are just a few of the things you can make a part of your morning routine at Whataburger. Then again, with so many choices, you could make a routine of not having a routine. But would not having a routine still be a routine? Chew on that for a while. Whataburger breakfast, just like you like it. This is number nine. Nine kickoffs for Ashton Adrian. Honorable mention, all sunflower selection in 2022. He keeps this up. He's going to have that and a little bit more at the end of this year. Another touchback. Battle of the kickers. Kent Lofman. I haven't seen much out of Mr. Lofman, but the one opportunity they did have, he is solely responsible for all the points that the Jaguars have scored. Total of three. 828 left to play in the third. First and 10 Jaguars. Looks like Connor Bohan's gonna come back into the game. We saw him a little bit in the first half. It looks like the Jaguars are gonna roll with him for now. To the left of Bohan is Baker. Bohan gonna keep it himself, bringing it to the near side. Tries to cut back, kind of spins around. He might have got one. I think they're going to give him forward progress to around the 22, 22 and a half. Bring up around seven and, or second and seven. Bigger pardon. We saw Connor uh, Bohan use his feet a little bit in the first half. And then we mentioned uh, the throw to the far sideline uh, to Davion Harris, who almost came down with a nice grab. Second and seven. Bohan. Takes it, gives it to Baker. Baker runs into a defender. That was Mr. Kindler. Baker, Kindler, tackle, short game. Same refrain, same song, different verse. What a great job this defensive guard. I mean, we've said it several times, but hats off. Certainly the offense that Mill Valley has right now isn't as explosive as in years past, but they, they have some great pieces, and we've seen flashes of that. Here's Bohan, he's gonna keep it himself. He's got a little wiggle to him, and wiggles his way down to the 35, and when he goes down, so do a couple of flags. We'll see if this goes back. It might be on the Trailblazers, we'll see. They're not pushing the Jaguar offense back. It is going to be on the Trailblazers. You can see the official. Face mask. That's, well, the, that's the third call that's really benefited the Jaguars offense all throughout the game. We saw the pass interference call, and then uh, what was the second call? There was another one that, that put them well, in the Well, there was a zone. personal foul hit personal out of bounds. Foul. There you go. Right. Yep, that's right. And now he got a face mask. And now we have first and 10 for Mill Valley, right at midfield. Bohan waits for the snap. 
Hands it off to Baker, tries to get to the outside again. Able to get a couple of yards. Maybe about four, depending on the spot. Now picks up five hard-earned yards. Going to bring up second and five. And for only the fourth time, I beg your pardon, the only the third drive in this game, Mill Valley has found Blazer territory. Two wide outs, top of your screen. Watts way up there, two tight end look. Harris in the slot. It's a lead blocker, gives it to Baker. He had five the first time, at about one. Going to bring up third and four. Well, what do you do here if you're the Jaguar offense? Do you, do you put the trust in Bohan to maybe air out? Maybe a quick slant pattern or maybe a long one? We'll see. You know, you're down 39 points. You're into Blazer territory. You can, I mean, you try to get a half of what you need now because you're going to go for it on fourth down. Bohan got to keep it himself. Wants to throw. He's got a receiver. I believe that's Brody Brigham. That is only his second snag of the year. His first one earlier in the year went for 16 yards. That one went for about seven. First and 10, Mill Valley. That was a really nice throw by Bohan. In the, in, like in the middle of three defenders, it looked like. We saw him put a little bit too much mustard on a couple of those passes in the first half. Right. That was a great job of maybe taking just a little bit off of it. He didn't need to fire it in there. But the young man certainly has an arm. Bohan rolls out to his left, squares up. He's got Harris. Harris tripped up. Great stop by number two, Cam Porter. He's been all over. Cam Porter. Shows us why he's one of the top recruits in the Midwest at his position. The 5'9 senior getting it done. Second and 10 for Mill Valley. So look around the crowd. Not too many people have left their seats, which is great certainly to see if you're a Jaguar fan. But on the far side, hats off to the student section of Gardner Edgerton. They have not, I don't think they've sat down the entire game. They're always doing something over there with their phones or cheering. Well done. Bohan. Thought about going to Harris. Thought about running it. They're going to go back. He's got Watts. Watts just shy of a first down. Going to bring up third and short. Well, Bohan there, he was really patient. Rolled out to the right. Waited a couple of seconds for a receiver to get open. Founded one right there. It's going to be third down and one. I would imagine they might keep it on the ground on this next play. But another great throw by Bohan. He was really patient once again, and I think the patience is going to be key, especially if you're throwing it. Third and one from the 26 of the Blazers. Bohan to the right is Baker. Bohan's going to follow Baker to the right, try to get that first down. He's not going to get Oh, he might have on that second effort. And they will say that somehow he willed himself forward that extra yard and a half because, folks, it looked like he was going to be brought down well short of the first down marker. With that, uh, that internal fortitude, somehow he was able to stretch it out and get a first. Well, he broke through two defenders, it looked like, on the far sideline, and then he was able to break free and get the first down. That was huge. This is a well-coached Blazer team as well. They're sure tacklers. They tackle with their, they see what they hit. You don't tackle with their head down. Their assignment sound. Nice run by Baker. Another six yard pickup. Mill Valley has a little bit of a recipe here going. They're starting to cook a little bit. 305, 304 left in the third. Of course, you can never say never. Not unless that proverbial piano falls from the sky. This 42-3 lead by the Blazers seems to be a little bit safe. Competing student sections. Second and six. Hand off to Watts. He's brought down again. That's a loss going the wrong way for Mill Valley. Great pursuit once again. By number 38. Well, we've been hearing it from the 
Garner Edgerton student section. I mean, it's always a competitive advantage when you got the fans, you know, cheering really loud. I think it's it's always good when you get your fans engaged in the game. Always creates a, an advantage for you. Just outside the 20 yard line, third and seven. Ball's at the 21. Hands it off. Oh, I beg your pardon. Bohan floats that one up, tries to get it to Harris. And I think Cam Porter was looking for an offensive pass interference call. And the Mill Valley fans were looking for a defensive PI call. Not going to get one either way. But the Jaguars are going to have a decision to make here. Fourth and seven. You got to assume they're going to go for this one. Well, now, now you're in the Blazer territory, and you're down by what, 38 points. I mean, what do you have to lose? 39, 38, 39. I mean, 38, 30, oh, 39, gotcha. 220, 229, gotcha. Two receivers to the far side. Single tight end is Harris. There's Baker. He was wide open for a second. That one's a little bit too hot. Probably forced that one just a little bit. But credit the Blazer defense for coming up huge one more time. Well, do you know who that was on the on the coverage? That was none other than Randy Singleton. Of course it was. I mean, He's guys, been all over the place tonight. This is the Randy Singleton show, fellas. This is the Travis Hunter of Kansas high school football. Randy Singleton, my man. Three touchdowns, really good coverage all throughout the game. You break up a fourth down pass right there from Bohan. And you get the ball back. It seems like they're going to be, uh, they're going to start off at their own 21 on the right hash. So I think we see a couple of new numbers. There's Hawkinson as well. Now Braven Pal still in there. Not that at some point you might see a couple of second stringers coming in, but they're having too much fun. That one hit the turf. Couldn't quite get him in the backfield. Somehow he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Nice, tough, gutty run by Grant Ellis. Well, he, I don't know what he can run a 40 in. But yeah, I get tired just watching those legs that go. 5'7", 145. He is blazing fast for the Blazers. 120-119 left in the third. 42-3. Still your score. No volley still looking for their first touchdown. Blazers looking ahead of that 42 points. Powell, quick out in the flat. I think Hawkinson might have taken an extra step. A little bit behind him. Brings up third and 11. Mentioned earlier that both of these teams coming into this one are 3-0 and for the Jaguars. They had a game at Shawnee Mission West, Shawnee Mission South. Or I beg your pardon, at Olathe Northwest, Shawnee Mission West and Shawnee Mission Northwest, last week against Northwest, they came out with a 14-7 victory. And that game was in doubt until the very end, obviously. Powell lets that one go, and that's going to be intercepted. Intercepted by Mill Valley. That was number six. Stepping in front of him, Mr. Jackson Lawler. 5'7", 141-pound senior. Gives this defense and this crowd a little bit of a spark. That's something to cheer about if you're Mill Valley. Indeed it is at this point. With 56 seconds left in the third quarter, the outcome really isn't in doubt. So you would think as a coaching staff, as a team, as a school, you look for little plays like that to kind of give you a glimmer of hope and to, to build on because it's not going to be a fun film study. No question about that. Back into the game is Connor Bohan. That's going to give Mill Valley an extra five yards. So now for the fifth time today, they are in Blazer territory. Fifty-five seconds to play in the third period. Forty-two to three. The top-ranked team in six A, according to A10 Varsity. 
The Blazers out of Gardner Edgerton having their way with the number one team out of 5A. Bohan under pressure, not sure what to do with it. He finally gets rid of it, kind of throws it out of bounds. Lives to find another day. Going to bring up second and five. He's trying to find Preston Fisher on the far side. Just threw it a little too short. It looked like he tried to run back and tried to corral the ball down. Nothing going for Bohan. It's going to bring up second down and five. But Bohan, again, really patient. I really like what I've seen with him just scrambling out of the pocket, being real patient, waiting for a receiver to get open. I mean, really good coverage from the Blazer defense. Second and five for the Jags. Ball on the 37 of the Blazers. Hand off to Baker. He's got a little room. He's got a first down and a couple of more. Inside the 30 for Tristan Baker. Has a couple of nice runs here in the second half. Been handed a piece of paper, the unofficial attendance here tonight. See the, the battle of number ones. 2,912, 2,912. That's pretty remarkable for high school football. It's about what you would expect when you got number one versus number one going mm -hmm. at it against each other. DD doing a beautiful night for high school football. There's Tristan Baker, shakes his way, 10-5, touchdown! Touchdown, Tristan Baker, touchdown, Maker! And for the first time today, the Jaguars, with 14 seconds left in the third quarter, have found the end zone. 42 to nine. Nice drive for the Jaguars. They put together, benefited by a couple of penalties, not as many as a couple other drives that they've had. They're able to capitalize and get it into the end zone. Tristan Baker, one of the hardest running players that you're gonna see anywhere in the state. Finds pay dirt. Lofman's kick is up, and it's right through and good again. Makes it 42 to nine. 14 seconds left in the third. Our bigger part, 10. Because of, of course, the extra point, you add one to nine, you get 10. Okay, quick maths. Whew. <laughs> Friends, tonight's game is not only a competitive contest between these two schools, but it's also an educational experience for the students involved because high school activities are all about learning life values. Your friends here at A10 Varsity and the Kansas State High School Activity Association remind everyone to do their part in keeping our hometown sports a positive experience for everyone. When you attend your next game, do your part to help rekindle the spirit of citizenship by showing good sportsmanship. You'll be teaching a positive lesson to the kids and oftentimes the adults around you, and you'll be helping preserve a proud tradition throughout the Midwest. Because around these parts, we may not agree with each other all the time, but on the whole, we know how to respect each other's viewpoints with civility and dignity. Speaking of viewpoints, I need to share some rather disturbing information about Austin Eckert that I just learned. Austin Eckert says that he likes mustard on his chocolate cake. I never said that. I, don't I know. think you I don't, did. I don't know what you're talking about. He handed about. me a piece of paper and said, don't tell anybody, Sean, but I like mustard on my chocolate cake. I never said that. I don't it's, know where you... I know you're embarrassed about it, my friend, but hey, you what know, it's good you to talk about. about... It's good to talk about these things on occasion. Just get it out there, deal with it, own it. <laughs> I never said that. I didn't, let alone, I didn't even write anything down and give that to you. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you came up with that. And hey, a super, <laughs> super happy birthday to Jeff Broadbent, who we see down in the stands. Big supporter of high school sports across the metro area. Also a happy birthday to Linda Roth, 42 years young today. Happy birthday, Linda Roth. Linda Trimble, I understand. She is turning 99 years young. How about that? If I could live to half of that, I'd be pretty happy. <laughs> 99. What is half of 99? You're taking way too long, I, my friend. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, that whole I'm, not, I'm not thinking about like math you, right now. I'm not yeah. thinking about division. I'm focused on football right you now. You are thinking about what you're going to say to your friends that are listening, and they've just found out that you like mustard on your chocolate that cake. That is not true. I, 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 I'm just saying, folks. No. No, he's not saying anything. That is absolutely not true. He put me on the stand. I will swear under oath, and I will tell you the truth, that I do not like Plead mustard on my chocolate, I, yes. chocolate cake. 
Oh, I'm not pleading the fifth. I'm telling the truth. <laughs> so you say 42 to 10, 32 points red. Mill Valley kicking off with 14 seconds left in the third. Here's Lofman. Expect this one to go. Ah, it's kind of a little unexpected. A little pooch. Going to be taken by an up back around the 38 yard line where Blazers are going to have it first and 10. Final 12 seconds of this quarter. Between the third and fourth quarters, we'll bring you up to speed on a couple of games of note and of interest. Next week, the Blazers are going to have another tough battle. Maybe a little bit tougher than this one against Olathe North. More on that in a second, because right now we are seeing a thing of beauty. This is a master class of assignment football. You know, there's some other teams in the area. You know, of course, Coach Dryling over at St. Thomas Aquinas. On the flex bone, the uh, double wing for a number of years to perfection. But coming into this game, I know myself, I was thinking, well, you know, Mill Valley's done such a good job at, against Aquinas over the past few years. Surely the – and – this Gardner Richardson team they continue that domination. Not so fast. Prognostication was just a little bit off. Kind of like my partner here with his mustard. But hey, 42 to 10 That's as we enter true. as we enter the fourth quarter here. We're gonna be <laughs> right back with more Friday Night Football Live on your number one place for high school sports. That is Satan Varsity.com. Coach here has always been a bacon and cheese Whataburger ad jalapenos guy. Until now, because he just met Whataburger's Southern Bacon Double. Fresh beef patties, Monterey Jack and American cheese topped with crispy bacon, crunchy slaw, and a tangy Southern style sauce. That's what we call an edible audible. Mm. Good call, Coach. The limited time Southern Bacon Double from Whataburger. Just like you like it. Back with you now, 42-10 is still your score. Blazers over the Jaguars. 12 minutes to go in this one to officially anoint the Blazers. 4-0 and presumably dropping the Jags to 3-1. Looking at the upcoming schedule for both of these squads. First, for Mill Valley, they're going to go to Olathe South next week. That's a game I believe will be on the NFHS Network. Follow 810varsity.com for updates on that one as well. While the Blazers are going to be battling Olathe North, that'll be a home game for Gardner Richardson. And that's going to be a battle of top five teams. Olathe North again loaded with, I mean, they're just oozing with talent, much like this Blazer team. Blazers, first and 10, ball on their own 46 yard line. Powell has a little bit of space to the right. You know, they say if you can make that first man miss, that's worth an extra five yards. And we are seeing Raven Powell. I mean, he is he is that, that extra five yards personified because he is making that first man miss all night long. I mean, not only that, but the offensive line for the Blazers has absolutely won the battle up front. We've seen that throughout the past three quarters. So, you know, obviously... You know, Sayer Padilla breaking free for a touchdown, and then we saw Braven Powell early on, too, break free for another touchdown. But give credit where credit is due. It's the offensive line winning the battle up front. Amen. More on them here in a second. Short gain. Going the other way. It's fourth quarter. Blazers going from right to left. South to north, if you will. But as Austin Eckerd pointed out earlier, he got a big surge there. 6'1", 325, Ethan Whitley. Longtime starter for the Blazers. 6'2", 280 from the center spot. 
Mason Matlock, been impressed with him as well. 6'3", 230 senior. Got old Caleb Moore. He's only 195, but he's playing like he's a lot more. 6'1", junior. And old Gabe James, the other book into that line. There's Butash inside the 20, inside the 10-yard line, or just shy of it. That's going to be first, either first and goal or first and 10. Right around the 10. But Dylan Butosh, well, Butosh came in to this contest with only eight rushes on the year. But, folks, he was averaging 20 yards per rush, over 160 yards so far. Now, the Blazers, they got a lot of heat because, you know, you look at the record and who they've had to play and the scores. But I tell you what, Blazers have certainly silenced the critics and they're going to say that he was able to extend the arm, hit the pylon for another touchdown. Touchdown, Blazers. And it is just touchdown throw. I feel like we're on a, an episode of Oprah where they're just handing out touchdown. Touchdown for you. Touchdown, you touchdown for you. You get a touchdown. 48-10. Everybody gets a touchdown. 10-09 left to play here in regulation. 24, Ashton Adrian on for the point after attempt. He makes that one count. And the count right now is 49 points for the visiting Blazers out of Gardner Etcherton. Got to make that 25 minute drive home tonight a little bit easier and a lot more fun on that bus. Because they have a 38 point spread against the five tower, excuse me, four time in a row defending 5A state champs. Not much of a prognosticator now. Chance Lebo, my old partner, he would, he'd have odds laid out on all these teams, you know, the over-under, and he'd come pretty close to that. I'm nowhere near that, that skilled with, with wagering or prognostication, but I tell you, I'm not sure too many people expected the outcome that we're seeing right now here at Jaguar Stadium. For the Blazers, you know, they've only given up now a total on the year. This is their fourth game, a total of 17 points. They gave up seven to Shawnee Mission East, a much improved Shawnee Mission East team, by the way. They held Shawnee Mission South to no points and a 58-0 win. Same thing with the Latha West. Last week, they won 42-0. They said they're going to be at home welcoming in a Latha North, and they're going to go to Lawrence. And Lawrence looks like they might be a little bit down this year. They just got rolled last night by Aloitha East. But after going to Lawrence, they're going to go back home. They're going to have back-to-back -back teams or back-to-back -back games against teams from Aloitha. First East and Aloitha South. Both of those teams certainly much improved. I'll tell you what, I'm super impressed with Coach Litchfield there at Aloitha South. Falcons. That's some pretty good work. For Mill Valley... Next week, they're going to, as I mentioned earlier, they're going to be at Olathe South. That's going to be out at ODAC. That's the one way outside, 151st in Oklahoma. I think that one's going to be on the NFHS Network. We'll see. Stay tuned, Nathan Varsity. After that, they're going to be back here on a Thursday night game against Shawnee Mission South the following week. Then they're going to go right down K7 to Olathe North. Okay, K7 and then back a little bit to Olathe North. And they'll finish out the season again on a Thursday night right here at Jaguar Stadium against Shawnee Mission East. I believe both of those two games, Shawnee Mission South and Shawnee Mission East, right here, those Thursday night games will be on ATNVarsity.com. But, of course, if you're not following ATN Varsity on Twitter or X, if you're not following on an X, I'm not sure how to say We're that. We're just going right? to say Twitter. I, I don't like saying there you go. following on X. Like, no. That's just, that just doesn't sit right with me. Looks like they're going to move the chains and get a first down. Nearly 3,000 people in attendance here at Jaguar Stadium, one of the biggest crowds over the past couple of years. Glad you've been with us here on this unexpected journey 
tonight, but boy, what a treat it has been. If you like explosive offense and seeing playmakers play, well, you are in the right, certainly the right spot. Randy Singleton and his three touchdown performance in the first half. Randy Travis Hunter Singleton. Although I believe Travis Hunter, he's he's on the shelf after that late. Yeah, game. he got um, he's dealing with a like incarcerated liver injury right now. Um, last Saturday he got um, late hit on him. Uh, door tried to throw one to the far sideline. Got hit real late, caused a, uh, a ruckus, you know, between the two teams. Colorado State, Colorado, obviously a big rivalry between those two. As once again, the Blazer defense stumping up the run game. Nothing really going right there, but going back to Travis Hunter, yeah, he's going to be out for, I think, a couple of weeks. He should be back uh, about a month or so from now at, at the very best, I believe. But a uh, Good to know that he'll be back uh, playing out there on the field soon enough. And uh, glad that he's doing all right right now. He seems to be doing just fine uh, recovering from his injury. Another handoff to Baker. He is tripped up. Kind of a shoestring tackle. Baker on the carry stopped just short of the first down. I think that was number 45 number coming in there. Thomas Sevastin from his Mike linebacker position. A couple of scoring updates for you. Ray Peck now up by 14 over Lou Valley North. Mentioned them, the longtime defensive coordinator for Mill Valley. Coach Drew Hudgens taking over a once proud Mustang program. It's kind of falling on tough times. Be sure to get them going again in no time. Another nice punt. Able to straighten that out. That one takes a, a blazer bounce backwards. That's going to be down by Jaden Woods. Now, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Jaden Woods, one of the top recruits in the entire country in the 2024 class. We haven't mentioned him a lot, probably because he's been double and triple teamed. They're not going to run at someone with that sort of star power. But he is trying to be as disruptive, uh, disruptive I beg your pardon, as he can, but he's just been limited on his opportunities. I'm going to tell you this, coming into this game, every tackle that he has on the season has been a tackle for a loss. Every tackle. Right up the gut. A little bit going there. 7-11, 7-10. Left to play. 49-10. to 10, 39 point spread. Couple extra. Scoring updates. Blue Valley 21. Blue Springs 15. Blue Valley Southwest 63. Spring Hill 13. So you look forward in the or kind of down the 5A bracket, see potential playoff matchups. Of course, you got the Wildcats out of DeSoto. Those, those Timberwolves behind Tate Everard and Dylan Dunn at the quarterback position. 63 points over a very talented Spring Hill Bronco team. That's one of the surprises of the night. Blue Valley West 21, Staley 7. This one has now gone final. St. Thomas Aquinas 21, St. James 6. St. James falls to 0-4 on the year. Still going to be a tough out in the 4A playoffs. I think we can credit Jaden Woods on that one. Number 5 at the 5.55 mark. How about that? Evan Seifer. Five number synergy. Looking for. Because at this point, folks, 39 points separate these two teams. Both of these teams are looking to fight another day. Well, I tell you what, if you're a Blazer fan, you're looking to celebrate tonight. And celebrate they will, and for good reason. Fourth and nine. Powell uncorks one. And that is going to take a nice blazer roll inside the 20, approaching the 15-yard line, where it's going to be blown dead. Mill Valley is going to have it again in not ideal field position. 5-14 left in the fourth. 49-10 is your score. Be right back.
makes that carry out comes in clutch. That was part of the commercial. First and 10, Mill Valley. Ball on their own 16. Tristan Baker, what a workhorse he has been. Talk about being a bell cow running back. All I can say is, you know, there's certain guys that, well, you know, whether it's in elementary school, middle, high, the pros, college, some guys, their frames are just built a little bit differently, a little more fragile. Not through any faults of their own, but that's just kind of their physical makeup. And you got guys like Tristan Baker. The guy just doesn't go down. have been able to see him on a number of games over the past three years for Mill Valley. And he's as strong today as he was three years ago. Another running back now. That is number 24 for Mill Valley. Number 24. That is Jaden Scobie. Jaden Scobie coming into this game eight. Eight rushes for 92 yards, a 12-yard average. His long on the year is 45 yards. He'll have another opportunity or two here with 417, 416 left to play, 49 to 10. Battle of the ones, 6A and 5A. Lived up to what you would expect in the first quarter, but after that, Blazer said, nah, not so much. We are going to assert our will, and that's exactly what they did in an impressive fashion. Well, we've talked about this all night, but the Blazers, they've just been playing assignment football, and they've just been sticking to what they do best. And sure enough, they did that. I mean, three touchdowns on the night for Randy, Randy Singleton. Singleton. Or Travis, whatever you want to – I mean, it was the Randy Singleton show tonight for sure. Uh, but give credit to Braven Powell, too. He's had a pretty good performance doing it both on the ground and in the air. Another run by Scobie, pushes the pile ahead. What well, could have been about a two yard gain turned into about a five yard pickup. Good, tough run. Like another group that we need to mention that's been extremely impressive tonight and obviously, you know, <laughs> throughout the past week and that's a coaching staff for the Blazers. Starting at the top with coach Jesse Owen. He had his team Absolutely dialed in and ready. There's no question that they are they're still kind of living off that, that double overtime letdown in the championship game last year, using that as momentum and as motivation because there's no question about their motivation tonight. You got to think here if you're Mill Valley, a little under three minutes to go here in the fourth. You are down by 39, but I think um, if they can end the ball game with a touchdown or at least a score, something to, to end the game with on a positive note, they could definitely build on that uh, for next week and beyond. But it's just been a dominant performance from Garner Edgerton. Blaine had to get off to Scobie. 217, 216. Second and six for the Jaguars. On the, quote, right side of the field for the Jaguars that they want to be on. That is Blazer territory. Well, with 150, 149, partner, why don't you go ahead and take us home? I'm going to take off my headset. Kind of rub my ears a little bit. finish the job Absolutely, for you? Absolutely, my All friend. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. A little under two minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Pleasure to be with you guys here on 810varsity.com. Here's the snap, handoff towards the left-hand side, breaks a tackle, and he's going to get tripped up at about the 44-yard line of Gardner Edgerton. 39-point lead for the Trailblazers, and I got to say, you know, we talked about the progn prognostications of this game and we thought maybe it was going to be close but sure enough the complete opposite and uh, biggest takeaway I think I've really uh, gathered from this game is the uh, both the offensive and defensive line won the ball game for the Blazers I mean they've been playing assignment football 
Here's the snap, and the handoff is going to go up the middle, and forward progress is going to be made, and it's going to be a late hit, probably a personal foul. That was... Let's see, personal foul. It's going to be face mask on uh, Jaden Scobie. Got forward progress and the face mask call. That's going to move them up the field. And if anything, this Jaguar offense, they've been feeding off of the mistakes from the Blazer defense. Something that they can definitely clear up as they go into next week. Big win for them, obviously. 39-point lead. This definitely was a big game for Garner Edgerton. As far as Mill Valley, they're just going to have to go back to the drawing board. Seen them uh, perform pretty well in the run game with Tristan Baker and Jaden Scobie. And uh, good performance from them overall. Here's the carry, and that's going to be tripped up in the backfield. It's going to be a loss of a few on the play. I wonder if they'll maybe run one more play or two before the end of the ball game. Partner, i got to interrupt. I forgot. I've got to read a couple of things real quick. Go for it. Friends, this game has been another production of A10 Varsity and A10Varsity.com. You're home for high school sports across the entire region. You can visit A10 Varsity 24-7 to get the latest news on your favorite team. Check out player stats and so much more. It's a big thank you to everyone back at the A10 Varsity Mothership, Nolan, and Charlotte, Leisha, Linda, everybody else who feeds the squirrels, keeps the power flowing. Seven seconds left. A big thank you to Hayden Kilo running the camera high atop the press box here at Jaguar Stadium. My friend Austin Eckert for being here with us. Great job being thrown into the fire. I was told at 11 a.m. this morning I was going to be calling one versus one tonight. I was like, oh, boy, I have got a big game to call tonight with you. And it's been great. It's um, It's been awesome uh, being a part of this game tonight, obviously. First game with A10 Sports as well. Um, just uh, I was super excited to learn that I was going to be doing this game. Likely the final play of the game. Here's the quarterback keeper, and he's going to get tripped up at about the 10-yard line. That's going to do it. Garner Edgerton with a big-time win over Mill Valley. Your final score, Garner Edgerton 49, Mill Valley 10. So on behalf of my partner Austin Eckert and Hayden Kilo, my name's Sean Brewer saying good night from Shawnee. Your final score, 49-10, Blazers over Jaguars. See you next week.